Hi, Larry Stewart here. I'm at, uh, in, in Tucson with uh, the folks from Caterpillar. Meet uh, Paolo Feline and uh, John Carpenter. Paolo is vice president of the, uh, uh, I'm going to have to read this, Global Construction and Infrastructure Group because I've been using GCI That's all the time. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, and John's technology and solutions manager uh, for, for Caterpillar's construction group. And it's a, it's a good thing that we're together now because, uh, you know, the, the, the announcement recently that Caterpillar has formed an alliance with a data analytics company with uh, uh, uptake and started a, a, a group within Caterpillar that's focused, well, it's, it's named analytics and, and innovation, mm -hmm. um, uh, certainly raises the question how is big data um, uh, playing a factor in the construction industry and in Caterpillar? Caterpillar's business. And uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit first of all, give me a sense for what analytics and innovation uh, really deals with. I mean, for the first thing I think of is product link and telematics uh, data. Is that is that the big portion of, of that, that organization's job? Well, I think it is a, a big portion of it, but if you think of telematics and you only get the information on, let's say, the engine is overheating or this is where I'm located. It's more of a description of where that piece of equipment is or what it's doing. When you add the analytics to that, you start getting into prescriptive or predictive type analytics. Not only is it overheating, but we're seeing a common theme uh, or this customer is going to need parts uh, or a kit delivered on site when he needs it, where he needs it ahead of time versus just the initial telematics description. So analytics is allowing us to get it a lot deeper. Okay, all right. I think uh, to add, we used to look for data. We used to try to create data. Yeah. Now we have all the data we want. So the focus is what do you do with that data and how do you analyze it? What do you use the data to produce oh. something? Mm -hmm. So that's the real crux of it. You know, How do we use that data? What do we do with it? A few years ago, sensors were very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Now we can put sensors everywhere. You know, why not put a sensor on the filters that instead of telling you to change the filters every 500 hours or 250 hours, you know, it detects the pressure of that filter or the elements or in the, in the, in the waste elements in that oil and say, hey, you know, time to change that filter. Just take the money you can save on that. Some filters you have to change in 100 hours. Some filters you might have to change in 1,000. But it optimizes what the customer does. What sort of results? should contractors expect? I mean, obviously you're, you, the company's been analyzing data since there, there has been product link. Obviously you're taking, taking things up, stepping things up, things up, devoting some resources to analyzing that data. How, how is this gonna change how contractors interact with machines and product link and their cat dealers? I think the sky's the limit. I mean, it's gonna depend on the application, the type of project, but we expect customers to realize huge productivity improvements. To be able to bid ahead of time by knowing through the analytics exactly how much dirt needs to be moved, where it needs to be moved, and then to be able day by day to study against progress against that plan, how you're doing, will not only help that particular project be more productive, but that customer will be more productive when he bids on the next deal, uh, safety. You know, just the simple telematics of being able to know exactly where your bucket tip is and where it needs to be and not have to put a man or a person in the trench to try and measure whether it's deep enough or, or not. A couple of years ago, when I went to visit customers and they talked about technology or how, how can they improve their performance through technology, they kind of looked at me and they say, okay, What's next? Where's my machine? Mm -hmm. Now, when I go to see customers in the last year, you know, the first half an hour of the discussion with them is discussed about, you know, how can you help me with through through, through technology? Okay. And there have been three steps in technology. One was on the machine themselves, what the machines do, uh, the new valves, uh, the new transmissions, uh, uh, which results in real benefits immediately, like the fuel fuel efficiency, fuel consumption, or productivity. The second big focus in the last few years have been the equipment management. And how do you manage your machines? How do you manage your equipment? How do you get your fleet going and so on? And the customer got excited about that. But what they really get excited is when you go into their space. In the sense that, you know, you get excited when you're going to, to helping the customer doing what, what he thinks he knows how to do best and better. 
And we see that all the time. So I see a switch from, from being interested in just managing the fleets or managing the machine to really going on the job site itself and seeing the changes in productivity okay. that he can have. Analytics <laughs> and innovation is, is, is not yeah. just about product length. It's, it's, a, it's about AccuGrade and I assume a, a lot more. Are there other elements that, that are, are oh, pulled into play here? I mean, the, the message we're trying to deliver is that we have to understand the customer pain points. And that doesn't just involve our equipment, that involves all their assets. They may have a job delayed because they can't find their scissor lift mm. or material, RFID tags, you know, telematics on, on any brand, that entire job site. Understand the entire flow and processes of the customer's job site via that data, whether it's our equipment or not, is highly critical. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about um, the kinds of pain points that uh, Caterpillar is focusing on initially in this effort? Because I'm sure it's, it's going to be an expanding world where you're going to learn more sure. as you get deeper into it. It's a really broad question and a tough one to answer, Larry, mm -hmm. because it depends on the, on the customer. But you can imagine in, in uh, today's difficult economic times, they're wanting to utilize and maximize their asset utilization. So dispatch, do we have the right piece of equipment? Uh, being able to, to make sure that the flow and the processes, uh, that the customers gain the data they need to understand if they're making the progress they need to to complete the job on time. You know, can they predict with the data whether there's going to be a bottleneck on a particular road that needs to be put in or a ditch that needs to be dug or fill that needs to be brought in? Is the compaction correct? Did we run into some material that we didn't think geologically was going to be there, and that's caused an issue. And did I get that information quick enough to, to come out with a counter plan? Yeah. So in a sense, uh, for, for the veterans out there, this is this, uh, the system, the, the product link, AccuGrade, right. the, the system for communicating with machines can kind of, sounds like it can kind of create a, uh, a virtual uh, production study on, on yes. their project site. There are customers out there that have forgotten more about <coughs> earth moving than I'll ever know. So this yeah. is to suggest that we're going to know how to do their business better. But we think we can bring some tools, maybe a consultative kind of approach, that once we understand what issues they are having, regardless of their experiences, maybe we have something that can help them out. In that same light, it has to be scalable. Not everybody needs all of the things that we plan to have offered. The, the, the pain points and the customer type and the application will determine what, we, uh, what they want. For, from a Caterpillar perspective, um, where do you see the biggest advantages being in data and analytics for cat dealers? I think the cat dealers, customers want their cat dealers to be consultants and partners. And this is going to empower and arm them even more with the kind of information that's needed to, to fill that role. Uh, could be condition monitoring centers as well. We've got dozens of dealers now that have their own condition monitoring center. Mm. The customers are asking them to watch their fleet for them around the clock. And with the analytics, they're able to do and get predictive kind of information and share that with their customers. I know the situations are, are, are very custom to the individual mm -hmm. customers' um, uh, operations and that sort of thing, but I also know that you guys have been working with people with product link data for a pretty good long time. Do you get a sense for, for how much, in general, you can change fuel consumption and idle time uh, in a fleet that's, that's properly monitored and people are taking advantage of the technology? I mean, overall productivity, we think it's not a reach to go 20 to 50 percent improvement on the productivity. And with that becomes improved fuel efficiency and the rest of it. What's, okay. what's interesting is, is uh, as a company, uh, we're cheering and celebrating if we can design something in our iron that saves us a cent or two or three or four of fuel savings. And we're talking in some cases in excess of 10 or 15 percent. Uh, fuel savings depending on the application. But that is not because of the technology of telematics, it is because of the machines that we recently, the new models coming out are right. considerably, you know, much more fuel efficient. And in fact, you know, the discussion that we'll have tomorrow at the meetings uh, is to discuss about this fuel, fuel consumption of fuel efficiency because, you know, uh, we were known, or at least perceived, at least outside the United States, of fuel drinkers. You know? mm, yeah. And now, all of a sudden, when we go up against uh, most of the, uh, you know, all the tests that we have done, it's shown that we are uh, delivering a tier four 
with less fuel consumption. Mm -hmm. Paul is correct, and I'm seeing another 10 to 15 on top of yeah. that. <clears throat> With telematic. With, Correct. Yeah. It's just managed. Because of the better management of the fee. We're, we're going to be able to segment the data by, by the type of job and type of application that we do, the mm -hmm. customer does. Right now, for example, we compare customers to downtimes or fuel consumptions or issues like this within a local place. For example, in the province or in the state uh, or, or in the Tucson area around here, we can say, okay, you know, these customers that operate. Uh, at 336, for example, they have an average consumption in the area of so much per hour. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, their idle time in the, in the sewer and water type of work, you know, is 35%. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and this, th this type of work, it might be 15%. Uh, so very, the customer is able instantaneously to kind of compare, you know, how is he doing performance-wise uh, versus a segment or versus a certain area, and that's going to help. Are our contracts, contractors actually going to access the resources and the benefits of, of uh, uh, um, an, an analytics and, and uh, innovation? Well, our, our distribution network and also the SciTech channel, which is Trimble's distribution channel that goes through our cat dealers, right, okay. is a pretty powerful force. And they are hungry for this type of information. Many of the dealers have a, a very strong understanding of, of uh, how to address the marketplace with these tools. But we'll leverage them. We'll provide the training for them. Uh, we'll, we'll help uh, talk to customers alongside with those dealers. And that's going to be our prime path to market. Right. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of pull being created now by our customers. And therefore, our dealers are gearing up to be able to answer to that poll. For example, I visited a couple of dealers last week and uh, they had some, uh, they call it the control rooms, whereby, you know, they, they are in contact virtually uh, with the customers and with the machines in this case. So mm -hmm. uh, our dealers are definitely, it's not going to be a Caterpillar or the, or the dealership. It's going to be a joint effort to do it because, as you know, you know, we consider a distribution system as important as, as the product itself. <laughs>